everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the Crystal Peaks necklace that matches the Crystal Peaks bracelet and ring tutorial that I have posted in my last two videos. I would show you the whole set together, but somehow my bracelet just disappeared into thin air. It was in my work area. I know it was. And it's not like my work area is a really big wreck. It's not. It's pretty darn organized right now. I don't know where it went. Anyway, I'm going to make this necklace today. I'll put up a picture of the bracelet and ring so that you can see the set. And this is what this looks like. I'm going to get you closer so you can see the center unit. The center unit crystals lay lower than the crystals in the side units. And it's really quite pretty. Like that. And I'm going to tell you right away, I started this tutorial a week ago before I had my nails done and they look kind of cruddy in the beginning half of the tutorial. So I apologize for that. But anyway, this is what this looks like. Each unit lays a little higher than the center. It's got a nice little dangle. It's really, really pretty. So let's back off and look at the entire necklace one more time so you can know what to expect that you're making. I find that always helps if you get a good look at it first. And that's what that looks like. We will put chain on the back and you will need two wire guardians with this too. In my material list, I didn't include them until the very end. I will put them in caption, but know that you will need two wire guardians if you want to do your necklace the same way I have done mine. Let's get started. Okay, for this project today, we're going to use 11-0, 8-0, -0, 0 and 15-0 seed beads. These are all Toho. The 11-0 and the 15-0 are the galvanized aluminum permanent finish, and the 8-0 is nickel plate. <clears throat> then we will need two colors of 4 millimeter bicon crystals. You'll need more of one color than the other. So I have more of my um, clear Swar Swarovski 4 millimeter bicone, and then I have the Ceylon Blue Sapphire. And then I have some 6mm bicones, which are also the Ceylon Blue. You will need two 8mm bicon bicones, which are also the Ceylon Blue, all Swarovski. <clears throat> then you'll need a toggle clasp, and I'm using this pewter color or pewter toggle clasp. You will also need a length of chain. Um, if it matches the metal of your toggle, that would be better. So the same basic color in your chain to your toggle. And then I will be using some 10 pound nanofill. You can use eight pound nanofill or your six pound fire line. I think eight pound fire line will fill your beads up a little too much. So you may want to consider either six pound fire line or eight or 10 pound nanofill. <clears throat> and a size 12 beading needle. A size 10 doesn't travel through 15 nose very well, so I recommend a size 12 for this project. And now let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start this project, thread onto your needle a wingspan of your thread. A wingspan is when you put your arms out side to side like you're going to fly away. And you measure from your fingertip along the length of the first arm, across your chest, along the length of the second arm to your fingertips on that hand. That is a wingspan of thread. Put that on your needle and then know that you will have to extend your fire line during this project. If you do not know how to do that, I will link a video below in the description box below the video player that will show you how to do that. Now, we're going to begin this project <clears throat> by picking up an 8-0 and two 4 millimeter bicone crystals of the color you have the most of. So mine is the clear, so I'm going to pick up two clear and then another 8-0. Two clear bicones and another 8-0. Two clear bicones, another 8-0, and two clear bicones. And this is what you should have. 
you will have four eight o seed beads with sets of two bicone crystals alternating between them. So start with an eight o seed bead and end with a set of two crystals, like so. Then bring these down to the end of your thread, leaving about a six to eight inch tail so that we can extend that to do the other half of our necklace. This will be the, the center of the necklace we are starting with. Bring your crystals around and from the tail side go back into the 8 and the two crystals in the next 8 and pull your beads into a circle like so. And then sew back through all of these beads until you get back to where your tail thread and your working thread meet. I've tangled my tail in there. And now we are going to take the tail thread and the working thread and we're going to tie a little overhand knot by going through the loop and pull them down between the crystals and the 8 seed bead between the crystal and the 8 And then do it one more time. Pull on your working thread and your um, tail thread. That tightens it quite a bit so then loosen it just slightly so that your beads aren't really tight together because we need to sew back through these quite a few times. So we don't want any slack but we don't want them tremendously tight to the point to where we can't get back through them. Now we are going to, we're coming out or we're right between actually the crystal and the 8 seed bead. So now we need to sew into the 8 and one crystal behind it, like so. And then you're going to pick up a 15 o seed bead and you're going to go into the next crystal, the next 8 o and the crystal after it. Pull that 15 o down between those two crystals and then do the same thing again. Pick up a 15 o seed bead, go into the next crystal, the 8 o and the crystal after that 8 o Pull, and that's what you should have. Again, pick up a 15 o go into the next crystal, the 8 o and the crystal behind the 8 o Pull it down. Make sure that that little bead pops between these beads nice and neat, so it's not up and twisted. Then, do that one more time. So I'm going coming out of this crystal, go into this crystal. I am going to go all the way into the crystal behind, but not go through the first 15 O that I seated between those crystals. And I'm going to pull this 15 O down. Now I am coming out of this center crystal here. I am not in the 15 o seed bead. I am just in the crystal. So now I'm going to pick up two <clears throat> 15 o's and an 8 millimeter bicone crystal, the big one. And then two 15 o seed beads, like so. And now we're coming out of this crystal right here. We are going to go across into the crystal directly opposite that crystal, so this one right here, and we're going to go into just that crystal, actually that crystal and then the 8 and the crystal behind it too. It's just going to be easier to slide through this way, but don't go through the 15 O between the crystals. Pull this slowly down until you get the thread lying nice and neat and tight down the center of the circle you have created, like so. Now you're going to go into the next crystal. You can go through the 15-0 if you'd like. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. 
go into the next ADO and next crystal, but not the 15 0 on the bottom here. Now, we have gone through this side once before, but that's okay. At the very top of our unit, we can do this. Go through the same side again. It's okay. So pick up two 15 0 seed beads and go through the crystal again. Now see how they've laid next to each other here? Now we're going to I think I came up through those crystals too. I don't know. I didn't. So I want to just come through the crystal, but not my 15 O's. So I've come through the crystal, and now I need to pick up two more 15 O seed beads. Confused myself for a moment. And now I want to go into this crystal on this side. So I'm going to go into the crystal and the 80 right here and I'm going to exit. So crystal and 80 pull this down. Get those 15 O's to lay nice between the beads. Nice and pretty. Like so. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I've got. Now on one end, the 15 O's are going to kind of lay on top of each other and kind of between the beads. And you're going to just not see them laid out flat like you do on the bottom. And that's okay. Not a big deal. That's kind of what we want, actually. And then here, we're going to start the side unit that we will make from the necklace. And then as we sew back through, we will make the bottom dangle and then the side unit to start the necklace portion over here. So let me show you what I mean. Here we're coming out of the 80 seed bead. You are now going to pick up an 11 -0, an 80, an 11 -0, an 80, an 11 -0, and an 80, and an 11 -0. I'll show you what I have. So this is what I have. Four 11 O's with three 80 seed beads between them. Now we're going to go to the opposite side of the 80 that we're coming out of and pull our needle through. And this has just created a loop. We're going to sew back through this loop or this circle actually. So sew back through three beads on this side. If I can get all three of them, like so. And then one 80, because I'm trying to retain a certain shape, sew through in this order. And then sew through three more here. And now we are going to go back into the 80 we're connected to and the crystal behind it and the 15 0 seed bead if you'd like or you can just sew through the crystals and then into the crystal the 80 and the crystal behind it but not the 15 0 seed bead just the crystal Okay, so I'm going to bring this down, and this is where we're coming out, this crystal right here. You are now going to pick up, let me count my design here, I forgot how many, I'm sorry. You're going to pick up 13 15 O seed beads. So pick up 13 of them, 3, 4, 6, 
Okay. 13 15 no seed beads. Drop them down to your piece. And then you're going to pick up a large bicone crystal, the biggest one you have, the 8 millimeter, and drop it down. And then you're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead and drop it down. Then you're going to go back through the bicone crystal around the 11 o seed bead. Don't go into it. Just leave it aside. Go through the crystal and then start gently going up through all these 15 o seed beads except for the very last one. So I've gone through all of them. As you can see, there's one here still. And that's not the one on my unit. That's just the first one I put on as I picked up my 13. Now, pull your thread through and up, like so. Make sure you don't pull it so tightly that these 11 O's or these 15 O seed beads look bunched up. You want them to be fluid, laying nice beside themselves, not all bunched up. Then pick up a 15 O seed bead onto your needle. And you're going to go into the bottom of this crystal. We were coming out of this crystal. We're going to go into the bottom of this crystal, ignoring that 15 O seed bead that's between the crystals, and just come up into the crystal, the 8 O seed bead, and the crystal behind it. You can also go through that 15 O over here. That is fine. and get this all arranged nicely. You have to, as you pull this up, you have to make sure that these first two seed beads right here underneath the one between the crystals lay nice together next to each other. Don't have them all weird and bunched up because then your little dangle is going to look stupid. Well, maybe not stupid, but not quite right. Now, we're going to sew up into this 8 seed bead right here. So we're going to go through the crystal and through the 8 and I'm not getting the 8 so I'm just going to go through the crystal if I can. No, I cannot. So go through the crystal and the 8 here. And this is going to bend up your needle a little because the beads are getting tight. But once you get through here, it won't be so bad. It's just the angle of the beads are kind of funny. Okay, so this is arguing. Let's see what's going on here. All right, I already made one of these and this didn't happen. So let me see if I can get myself a little space to move between here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up through the crystal behind it because it's just in my way. And you probably shouldn't have this problem. Your beads may not be laying like mine. You should be able to come through that 8 -0. If you cannot come through the crystal, make sure you go back through the crystal. Let's see if you can exit. Like so and pull your thread back out. Now I am in this bead here. I'm leaving this portion where it was difficult for me in here so that you can see the way out. Sometimes you have to go through the next bead and back out. As you do that, you need to make sure that you hold your needle closest to the crystal or whatever you're coming back out of as you can. So when you go back into it, go really close to the top of that hole so that you don't pick up the thread that's already in there and tangle yourself up even further. So now you can see that my thread came out nice and cleanly and I am ready to make my unit here on this side. So this is the center of the necklace. This will be where it goes up around the neck on this side and this side it will go up around the neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up an 11 seed bead and 8 -0 an 11-0, an 8-0, an 11-0, an 
an 80, and an 110. And this is what I have. Four 110s with 80s in between them. Now I'm going to attempt to go back into this 80 seed bead. So just the 80, go at an angle, and you see I can get right through it. My beads are not full of thread, it's just they were laying to where they were blocking the hole of that 80. So it made it difficult for me. Now, this is what it should look like. Go around this unit one more time. We back up a little bit here. And I'm going to sew back through all of these beads. And then when I get back to the 80, I am going to slide into the crystal behind it and the 15-0 here. And I'm going to go back to this unit. We're going to start this side first. This side is prepared and ready, but we will need to sew our tail up into that area and then start on that side. And then we'll extend the tail. So <clears throat> we're going to bring the working thread over to this side and begin this side like so. I'm going to sew up into all of these beads. So I've come through the 80, these three 11, 11 0, 8 0, 11 0, and then I'm going to come up into the very top 80 seed bead. Then this side will be prepared for my next unit. And then I am going to take my needle off, but I need to wipe down my crystals. I think I have too much lotion on or something. They're looking pretty dull. Anyway, I am going to take another needle and I am going to thread it onto this tail over here. That's got a tangle in it, so let me uncut that off. And I'm just going to thread this onto another size 12 beading needle. Hopefully this is a 12. I think it is. It might not be. It might be a 10. And I may have to redo this, but... See if I can do this halfway decent time here. Okay. So now I am coming out of this 8 with my tail right here. I'm going to sew up through this crystal. If I can get into it. But it's really tight. Okay, I've got it. I'm just going to use my flat nose to pull it through. It's at a funny angle and it's really resisting me. There we go. And then I'm going to go through this 15 O and the next crystal and try to exit this 8 O here, right here. So I've come up through the 15 O, this crystal, and this 8 O right there, and I'm going to pull it through again. Then I'm going to sew into these three seed beads on this side. So the 11 out, the 15 O, and the 11 O. And then, let me get it to where I'm not dangling it everywhere. So I've come up through these three on this side, and now I'm going to come through this one. Right here. Now I pulled my needle off and <clears throat> I'm going to prepare to extend my fire line here. Okay, so grab a nice long length of fire line, whatever you feel comfortable working with, or nanofill, whatever you're using, and then pick up the one laying down on your bead mat. 
and cross it over the top of your new thread. And then go underneath your new thread with your um, tail, or the one that's hooked to your uh, component here. And then once you have done that, then bring the two ends, you've got your tail and your, working, or your new working thread, and crisscross them. Take one underneath the other, like so. This is just a square knot. Tie it as closely to your piece of work as you can. Pull this knot tight by pulling both ends of your thread here, like so. And make sure you get a nice little tight square knot there. Now, your working thread, you can pull the length down until it's rather short. And then take both of your threads, and hopefully I have a sharp pair of scissors here, and cut. Nope. Cut them short, like so. And then grab a lighter. At the bottom of the flame, just go close to it and just melt little tiny knobs into your um, fire line. Let me get really close so you can see. Now, I haven't made them very big because I want to be able to pass through my beads again. The smaller you make the little nodules on the end, the smaller your knot will be when you join them. So now you're going to join these two knots together by pulling. So just pull gently until they slide together, like so. This is a nice tight joint. You don't have to worry about anything breaking. And now you have a long thread to work with on this side of your necklace. Let me back off so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Now I am going to go ahead and put a needle on this side too. Of course this thread is longer than my other one now, which doesn't really truly matter, but I will need to extend the other one before I have to extend this one now. So now I am just going to thread this new piece into my needle and like I said this might be a bigger needle I may have to change it out we'll see let me see if my 15 O's will slide over it yeah seems to be nope that's not a 15 O let's try a 15 O yep it slides over it so I might be okay here now I'm going to park this needle somewhere in my bead mat on this side and I'm going to pick up the needle I had been previously working with. Now just organize yourself so that you don't get your threads crossed. So park your needle somewhere on that side where it won't get in the way of what you're doing on this side. And then begin by picking up two bicone crystals. So we're coming out of this 8 seed bead here. Pick up two of your clear bi bicone crystals and an 8 and then two more clear bicone crystals. And now you're going to come back through the opposite side of the 8 you're coming out of. Like so. And then you're going to sew back through this entire circle you just made. So come up through both of these bicones. And then come up through the 8 And then come back through the two bicones. and then come through the 8 -0. Now we're going to place 15 0 seed beads between these crystals. So go up through one crystal and exit between the two of them like this. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead. I've got 15 0s and 11 0s mixed. Yay! Okay, pick up a 15 out, go into the next crystal, pull the 15 out down, go into the 8 out in the next crystal, pick up a 15 out seed bead, go into the next crystal and the 8 out that you're attaching this unit to. Like so. Now I'm coming out of this 8 out seed bead right here. 
Now I'm going to put an embellishment on top of this unit, and then I'll put an embellishment on top of this unit, so we're kind of backtracking. You can't really embellish this one until you make this one, so you embellish this one and then move into the embellishment on this one. So pick up a two 15 0 seed beads, and then we're going to use six millimeter bicones now. So pick up your six millimeter and two 15 0 seed beads. You're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead, we're going to go into the same side of the opposite 8 0 seed bead in the unit. So go in here, and as you pull, pull this over the top. Make sure that your crystal lays in the center of the unit and your 15 0 seed beads have no slack. Then pick up two more 15 0 seed beads. Go into the crystal and just the crystal. Put your thumb over the crystal so that it doesn't move and pull your 15 0s down on that side, like so. Get you a little, a little closer just to make sure you can see since we're using bright silver and clear beads. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. Pick up two 15 0 seed beads. Now we're going to go back into the 8 0 seed bead on the opposite side from which we started and <clears throat> pull this down. Put your thumb on top of the crystal and give a little tug. Make sure it's nice and tight. Otherwise, <clears throat> if you go into the next step without it being tight, you will have a loose crystal in your necklace. Now, after you've given your little tug, go into these three seed beads in the unit we first created right here. Go through them. Go through the 8 seed bead here. Okay, so now we're coming out of this 8 seed bead here on the corner of our center unit that we've created first. And we are now going to make an embellishment on this component that we built right here, or this unit we built right here. We're going to pick up two four millimeter bicone crystals in the clear color and go into the opposite 8 seed bead that's connected to the unit we just built. Pull these down on top of the three that we just skipped over, the three seed beads there. Then pick up two more four millimeter bicone crystals and then go into the 8 0 that we started in here on the unit, the center unit. So you're coming out of this one, go into this one. And pull them down. They should lay up, kind of at attention on top of the three beads we just skipped. Now go into the bicone crystal that you're closest to on the side that the thread is coming out of and then pick up a 15 0 seed bead and go into the next crystal. And then sew back through the 8 0 seed bead between the two units. And then go up into the bicone crystal again on this side. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead. Go into the bicone crystal next to it. Pull your thread through and pop that 15 -0 down and then go back into this 8 -0 seed bead right here. Now we're going to make an embellishment right in the center of these two embellishments. So we are going to pick up, I'm staying very close so you can see what I'm doing, we're going to pick up a 15 -0 seed bead and then a 4 millimeter blue crystal and a uh, 15 0 seed bead, like so. So we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead. We're going to turn our piece and go into the 8 0 that we connected to when making this unit. So the 8 0 we've been working through all along has come through it. And as you do this, you're going to need to lift your beads and guide them into 
the slot between those clear bicone crystals, like so. And then give a nice little tug so that the 15 O's actually lay where they're supposed to. And the crystal lays nice and kind of embedded down there. I'm just kind of playing with my 15 O. And then I'm going to pick up another 15 O. I am then going to go back into the crystal. And then I'm going to pick up a 15 O and go back into this 8 O right here. The one that's attached to the center unit. Now I'm going to turn my piece over. Make sure you don't tangle with your other thread. And then just sew, you're coming out of this 8 O seed bead, sew up into these three beads right here. Now sometimes they're laying at funny angles and they're hard to get through. So if you have to go through just two, then just go through two. If you have to, you can sew up through the crystals and come back through too, if you have to. We don't want too many passes through the crystals because then they'll start looking really thready and foggy instead of bright and pretty. Now, but if you get stuck, that's another path. Now, go through this Edo seed bead here. And then we're going to go through these crystals here. So my thread is coming out here. I'm going to go through this crystal and the 15 O. Then up through this crystal and the 8 O and turn my piece over. Like so. And now just to balance things out, I will move, oops, that was really blurry. I hope that wasn't blurry the whole time. Let me move that back a little bit. Now, just to balance this out, I will do the same thing on this side, and then we will come back and learn how to do the next, um, the next units all the okay, way up. So on this side, we're coming out of this um, eight eight O seed bead, and we're going to start by making our next unit. So we make the next unit, and then we embellish the unit of seed beads, and then we make a unit of seed beads, and then the next unit of crystals. So we kind of backtrack on this. So now we're going to pick up two bicone crystals and an 8 seed bead, and then two bicone crystals, four millimeter, clear, like so, and through the opposite side of the 8 Pull this down. Now, your extension should just flow right through there like mine did, but if it did not, then your knot is a little too big and you need to practice on making smaller knots. Now, go up through this entire unit and secure it by going through it again. So it's secured, now we need to put our 15 O seed beads in. Go up through one crystal, pick up a 15 O, go into the next crystal, and through the 8 O seed bead, go through the next crystal, pick up a 15 O seed bead, go through the crystal, and the 8 that you're attaching to the previous unit in. Like so. Now we're going to embellish this one. So we're going to pick up two 15 O seed beads and a six millimeter bicone and two 15 O seed beads. We're coming out of this side of the 8 O seed bead. We're going to go into the opposite 8 O seed bead on the same side right here and pull this bicone crystal over the top of the unit, like so. And then we're going to pick up two 15 O seed beads, go through the crystal, hold on to the crystal, and pull your 15 O's down, tighten it. And then pick up two 15 O seed beads, 
and go through the Edo seed bead that you started in on the opposite side from which you started and then pull them down. Make sure that you have a nice tug there. You don't have any slack so that your crystal will not be loose on your necklace when you finish. Now we're going to secure that. Now that it's nice and tight, we're going to go through these three seed beads right here. So we're coming out of this 8 -0. We're going to go into these three seed beads here. And pull. And then we're going to come up through this 8 -0 seed bead between the crystals on our original center unit here. And pull. Now we are going to embellish this one. So we are going to pick up two bicone crystals and go into the 8 -0 seed bead opposite the one we're coming out of, but on the same side we're coming out of. And then we're going to bring these down and make sure they go on top of the three seed beads that we just skipped over. Pick up two more bicone crystals. Skip these three seed beads and go into the 8 -0 on your original center unit. and pull. Bring them up over the beads that you skipped over and then go into the first crystal next to where you're coming out of the 8 -0, and pick up a 15 -0. Go into the next crystal and pull that 15 -0 down between them and then go into the 8 -0 seed bead that you originally attached to. Let me back off here because I may be getting out of camera. And then up through this crystal here, a 15 0 seed bead, into this crystal here. and then into the 8 -0 seed bead again. That's what you should have so far. Now we're going to put our blue crystal between these clear, clear crystals. So pick up one 15 -0 seed bead, one blue 4 millimeter, and one 15 -0 seed bead, like so. Now I'm going to get closer again just to make sure you can see how I do this. Now, we're coming out of this side of this 8 -0. We're going to go into the 8 -0 between the two units here. We're going to pull these down. And when we get about almost all the way tight, we're going to push that crystal in and pull the 15 O's by pulling on the thread down so that it anchors that crystal down in between the other two crystals. And then we're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead go through the center crystal and then a 15-0 seed bead and go through the 8-0 here. Pull. Now when you tighten it you will see that these kind of lift up above the center unit and it gives it kind of a three-dimensional look and it's very very pretty look at it now. It's kind of funky looking when you start, but once you've finished it, it is really a very pretty centerpiece for a necklace. Now we are going to sew, turn your piece over, you're coming out of the 8 -0. we're going to sew up to this top 8 -0. here. So go through these three beads, They are laying at funny angles, so you're only going to be able to get through a couple at a time, more than likely. Or then again, like I said, you can go from the 8 -0 up into the crystals into the next 8 -0 also, if you have to. And then go into this 11 -0 here, and the 8 -0. Yeah, I can't do that, so I'm just going to go up through the 11 -0. 
if your beads are not this tight, then your piece is not going to be really nice and neat. So your beads should be pretty tight. May make it harder to manipulate through, but your end product will be a much nicer end product. Then I'm coming out of the Sado. I'm going to go up into these crystals here. So I've gone through the first crystal and 15 O. I'm going to turn it over and go through the next crystal and then up into the 8 seed bead right here. Like so. Now, this is just a matter of making units on either side. You can go from side to side if you'd like, or you can do one side until you're finished and then do the other side, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you how to do your next unit, and then um, we will go off camera and make that to length that um, will be in the front of the necklace, and then we will attach chain. So let's make our next unit just so you know how to proceed from this point. From this point, you will make an 11 -0 seed bead, an 8 0, 11 0, 8 0, 11 0. Oops, that 11 0 won't go down. There we go. Ah, 11 0, 8 0. 11 -0. I'll show you what I have. So it's just the same as these units we made. First of all, we're going to always make that unit and then this unit and then embellish this unit. So you're going to have four 11 -0 seed beads with three 8 0s in between them. Then you're going to go into the opposite side of the 8 you're coming out of. Pull these down into a circle. Then sew back through all of them. I just turned my piece over just so that I can get it with my hand a little bit better without tangling in my other thread on the other side of my necklace. Now I'm going to go up through this 8 0, back through these three on this side, and three at a time, then one. So three, one, three, and then back into the, the 8 0 on the unit. Now we have to sew back up to the top so that we can make our next unit out of this 8 0 seed bead. So now you're going to go down into these three, three at a time, to retain the shape that we want, and then into this 8 0 right here. Now I'll get you close again while I make this unit here so you can see. Now I've got my unit of seed beads. <clears throat> After you make your unit of seed beads, you will then make a unit of crystals. So you pick up two bicone crystals in your clear color. So I'll go on my needle. I'll do that. There we go. Two, and then an 8 -oh, and then two, and go back into my 8 -oh here on the opposite side. Pull this down and sew back through it to secure it. Back into this ADO here. Now we have to put in our 15 0 seed beads between the crystals. So go up through one crystal, exit, pick up a 15 0, go into the next crystal, and again into the 8 0 seed bead, into the next crystal, pick up a 15 0, go into the next crystal, and the 8 0 if you can. Then put your embellishment on top of this unit. Two 15 O's, a 6 millimeter, and two 15 O's. You're coming out of this side of this 8 0, you're going to go into the opposite 8 0 on the same side, and geez Louise, grab your <laughs> needle and pull this down. Push them on top of the unit, pick up two 15 seed beads, go through 
the crystal, pick up two 15 ounce seed beads, go back into the 8 ounce seed bead here. It's exactly what we did on both of these, so it should be quite familiar by now. Now we need to embellish this unit, so we pick up, we go through these three seed beads to set this embellishment. You want to go through the three seed beads to make sure that you have enough tension on that crystal so it stays in place. Then you'll start in this 80 seed bead and you will pick up your two clear crystals. Coming out of this 80, we're going to go into the opposite 80 on the unit we just built. Pull those up over the three beads we skipped in the process. Then pick up two bicone crystals. And go back into the 8 o that you started in. Like so. Now to secure this, we will go up into the first crystal. Pick up a 15 o seed bead. Go into the next crystal here and the 80 if you can. Yeah, probably shouldn't do that. It's just going to boggle everything up. So just go into the 15 or the crystal with the 15 o and then the 80 between the two units up through the first crystal. Pick up a 15 o go into the next crystal. And you can see how this is getting very repetitive. Go into the 80 here. By this point, you should have these units down pretty good. Now we need to embellish between these crystals. So we pick up a 15 0, a blue crystal of the 4 millimeter kind, and a 15 0, like so. Now, we're coming out of this 80 on this side. We're going to go into the 80 on this side. And as we pull our thread, we're going to bring it up over the top and squish that bead down in the center of those previous crystals. Now pick up another 15 O, go through just the crystal. And then pick up a 15 O and go through the 8 O that you've attached to. Like so and you have your next two units. So turn it over and we're coming out of this 8 here. We need to sew up to this 8 and do the same thing. So go into these three here and then go into the 8 and then go into the crystals crystal 15 o crystal and 8 o and now I'm ready to just repeat so I would pick up my series of 11 o 8 o 11 o 8 o and make my circle and then sew through it secure it go to the top bead make my unit of crystals and then come back and embellish this embellish that one embellish the, the seed beads then sew back all the way up to the top to the crystal unit and just continue doing that until you have okay so i have made 14 units on both sides of my center unit here count each unit individually regardless if it has the small crystal or the large crystal in it each is a unit so I've counted each individually, made sure I had 14 on either side of my centerpiece, and now I've decided to add some wire guardians into the mix, and I'll put that in caption in the beginning of the video, since I did not do that. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add the wire guardian on the end and then some chain in our toggle clasp. Of course, this is what's going to determine how much presence it has on your neck and where it lays. If you make a longer chain, you're going to have a longer necklace that will lay more towards the middle of your chest. If you make a shorter chain, then you're going to have a shorter collar type necklace. And this portion just, just lay right beneath your throat where your throat indents in right at the um, base of your throat. So let's put on a wire guardian. I'm going to get you close. These are the smaller wi wire guardians. They generally come in two sizes. This is the smaller size and um, I will put the measurements in caption. Now we are going to we're coming out of this 80 seed bead here after putting on the last unit and you should have thread on either side so that you can go ahead and do this and just come up through one side of your wire guardian like so and then we're going to pull this down to the 80 seed bead and then we're going to go through the other side of the wire guardian put your thumb over the wire guardian so that you can draw your thread down and guide it into the divot on top of the wire guardian, like so. And then just go back into the other side of the 80 seed bead. I'm going to sew back up through this a couple of times so that I can secure this wire guardian. I'm just going to turn my piece so that I can get through the back here and go back up through that wire guardian again. I'll turn it back around. Go through the other side. And then back through the 80 seed bead. And you can do that a couple of times. Once you've done that, then you're going to sew down into the unit here. So let me do it one more time. Then I'll sew down into this unit, show you how to tie off, and then you can do the other side. And we'll come back and add some chain. So we're going to go up through this side here. Okay, I thought I was going to do that real quick, but it doesn't seem to want to do it real quick here. There we go. Then I'm going to go back down into the other side. And then into my 80 seed bead. I turn my entire necklace over so I don't get it all jumbled up here. And I'm just going to sew down into this unit here. So I'm going to go down into this crystal and I'll just avoid that 15 OC. Well, actually, I'll just go through it. I don't think I've gone through it too many times yet, so it should be fine. And then I'm going to go into this 80. And right here, between this 80 and this crystal, right here, I'm going to go underneath the thread bridge between the 80 and the crystal, make a loop and go through the loop and pull a knot down in between those two beads. And then I'll just sew back up through this crystal and 15 O. Since these units tend to be tight or actually the beads lay funny, it's hard to get in and out. I'm just going to go up through the crystal and then back into this 80. I'll tie another knot. I'll sew through these crystals and then I will cut off my thread. Do the same thing on your remaining thread on the other side of your necklace. Go ahead and put your wire guardian on, sew through it a couple times, turn it over, sew through the beads and the units, and then cut your thread off, burn down your tags, and we'll okay, be back. Okay, so I have gone ahead and put my wire guardians on each side. And now I am going to add my chain to the wire guardians. 
I have cut two four inch segments of chain. And I'm not going to tell you how many lengths that I cut simply because we're all going to use a different size and type of chain and um, that's not going to be accurate. So cut about four inches of chain. Now that is if you want to make about an 18 and a half inch necklace. It's gonna be right around 18 inches. If you want it longer, cut longer chain or make more segments. If you want it shorter, then make less segments or make or cut less chain. Your easiest way is going to be to adjust it with your chain and not so much with your segments. This is the reason we're doing this is a couple. Um, one, it is more flexible to go around the top of your neck, and two, you're going to save on crystal this way instead of going all the way up around. And of course, you could do something like a right angle weave all the way up around too if you do not have chain and you want it to have a consistent beaded look. That's fine too. Now, I have my wire guard in here. I have my chain. I'm just going to open a link of my chain and I'm just going to pop it right onto my wire guardian and then the other end I'll pop onto my um, my clasping. Now, if my chain is a little too thick for the hole here or here, then you can always use a jump ring. If, if you have a chain that's very difficult to open and close because it's tiny or something like that, then use a jump ring again. But for this, I'm going to see if I can slide this through my clasping hole because it's the smaller one. Yeah, this is going to work fine. So I'm going to put my clasp on one end of my chain and then close it back. Open from side to side like you twist it. Don't pull the links open. I'll show you again with this one. So I'm going to grab one side of my chain and link. then I am going to open it like so. And then I'm going to slide it on to my wire guardian on my necklace. And then I'm going to twist it shut. And make sure you get a nice twist. Wiggle it a little bit to strengthen the link. And then you have one side finished. Let's do the other side. Same thing. We're just going to grab a chain. Open it up. Put on the link, or put on the clasp, I mean. Close the link. Make sure you close it nice and tight. This is a nice strong chain too, good size links. So I'm pretty sure it's not gonna open back up. Now I'm going to open this one. Slide it on to my wire guardian. Close it. And I have a necklace and I'll back off and show you what it looks like. I'm going to actually put it on a different color bead mat so you can see it better. And be here right is what it looks like. Nice pretty finish of the necklace. Turned out really nice. And I'm going to show you the center units of the necklace here so you can see the dimension of this. Now this um, unit here lays lower than these units. So if I turn it sideways, maybe, nah, I don't know if you can, if it's translating well. But this particular unit is lower than the other units and it just makes for a really, really neat look. It's, it looks like a window or something. And it turned out just really pretty. So let me back up just a little bit again now that I've boggled it all up. And you can see, let's see if you can see how pretty it is. And of course, you could leave off the dangle too if you wanted to, but I kind of like it. That's what that looks like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you make one. I would show it to you with the rest of my set, but somehow my bracelet disappeared into thin air. I don't know where it went. Anyway, that's what that looks like. Have a good day.